When in mist form, I am invulnerable to physical weapons, blade and claw. I can seep through locked doors and cracks and move swiftly like a shadow fleeing light. The Black Forest reigned here, its kingdom rarely invaded by those that live in the light. But it was called home by this mysterious Vorador. Legend told of a time when Vorador defeated Malek of the Seraphan. If such a man did exist, then he could perhaps be the key to defeating the Ward. Iron Sword
Ravages flesh with teeth of metal and flame, leaving only scorched remains. This spell allows me to enslave my enemies, giving me control of their bodies. When I release my grip, their bodies will shrivel and die as I displace their souls and replace them with my own.
Shed your blood for me, and these artifacts will be yours. So, you come to the Spirit Forge for help, do you, vampire? Trade your secrets for the blood of the dead, I will. One must be wary in dealing with the spirit forges. The wraith and shades that inhabit them offer items beyond mortal dreams in exchange for a sampling of your blood. The wraith smiths forge their items with forfeit souls. Shed your blood for me, and these artifacts will be yours. So. You come to the spirit forge for help, do you, vampire? Trade your secrets for the blood of the dead, I will. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Energy Bank. <coughs> this spell allows me to use blood from my own body as a weapon. When struck, my enemy's blood would flow from their bodies to fill me with life. Tis a risk, yet the rewards are a temptation. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your strength has increased, for our blood enhances.
The luxury with which this Vorador surrounded himself was impressive. His wealth would shame the haughty nobles of my former court. That this vulgar display of fortune remained undisturbed was a testament of fear's dominion over greed. Their charms were almost visible through the gauze of their clothing, yet beauty such as theirs delivered only death. For these were Voridor's pets, nothing more than beasts, slave to his will and the easy prey he provided. Vampires, all of them, held in thrall by one stronger still. <laughs> The darkness was soothing, and in the distance, sharp and sweet, came the scent of spilt blood.
a vampire's feast. Like cattle awaiting slaughter, men and women dangled from the rusted hooks upon the dungeon walls. Blood and viscera frosted the dirt and stone. The abundance nearly overwhelmed me, for blood is the life. Help! We can't My enemies are quite vicious, and the Chaos Armor extracts from them a heavy price for their bloodlust. The blows are meant for me, but it is their bodies that carry the wounds. blood of others. This spell is especially useful in the face of multiple combatants. Beware those with tainted blood. The room I had entered had but one purpose. The torture and execution of human beings for the sadistic pleasure of its engineer. Blood was splattered on every surface. 
The dread and agony of victims' past still echoed through the lethal walls. A symphony of terror and agony filled the air. Then, from amidst the cacophony of screaming souls, came the perverse laughter of the vampire himself. <laughs> And upon the wall, scribbled in blood, were the words, Manus Seller Die. The tapestries wove a tale of chaos ignited, an orgy of fire and pain. Undead beings with rotted skins caked with sulphur and ash beckoned at me through a burning abyss. Their tortured stares were a testimonial to the price of weakness. Their fate would not find me, yet blood calls to blood.
Amongst Vorador's possessions, I found an ancient chronicle. Long ago, vampires grew in such number so as to capture the attention of the circle. The Order of the Saraphan, or the Angels of Light, as they were called, was instated to counter the menace. Thus, the Vampire Purge began. In the bowels of that black forest, I found something worse than hell. A vision of what I was becoming. It's not often I see one of our own, especially one as young and foolish as yourself. Nonetheless, drink. Drink deep and indulge your gift. Gift? <laughs> Vorador thought my curse a blessing. That we were gods. But mortals offered their blood as sacrifice so that we could enjoy our supernatural powers. And somewhere, deep inside my new self, I knew that he was right. That mortal dreams were prayers. Prayers to us, begging us for power. I pondered this as the decadent old fool prattled on about his past. Gorish account of how he defeated Malek of the Seraphim and took his vengeance upon the Circle of Nine for supporting the Seraphim Holy War to exterminate us. on your corpses! After slaughtering six of the sheep, I defeated their pathetic little shepherd, Malak. Since then, our kind has not bothered with the cattle, except to feed. And I suggest you do the same. Meddling with the affairs of man can do us no good. Seraphan witch hunts are much too tedious to concern ourselves with. Am I understood, Kay? Good. Take this ring. If you ever need assistance, it will summon you. Despite your youthful arrogance, you amuse me, Kay. It would be such a pity to lose you to the abyss. Now be gone!
visit with Voider only strengthened my resolve. His power uncontested by mortals, he had fallen to another enemy. Decadence has claimed itself many a great warrior. And so I left that place, with clear knowledge of what sort of monster I would become if I let my curse consume me, and with an ally for the future. The Axes Oh! 
sanctuary.
Does your patience with the seraphim grow thin, vampire? Dogs come only when their masters call. I believe some members of the circle have banished themselves north. Perhaps Dark Eden is the snare you seek. Ariel told me then that the easiest way to find Malik was to force his hand. The ward was sworn to defend the members of the circle, and so if one of the circle was threatened, Malik would appear to protect them. She spoke of an unholy union between three of the wizards of the circle, and directed me to their dark Eden. A triad congregates at the roof of the world, Cain. A plot to twist the land to shape the world. North is where your vengeance lies. In my travels, I learned much about the legend of Janos Audrin. Here in this quaint pastoral village of Ustenheim, that dark enemy was born. Janos preyed upon its peasants until he was finally hunted down and executed. One must be wary in dealing with the spirit forges. The wraith and shades that inhabit them offer items beyond mortal dreams in exchange for a sampling of your blood. The wraith smiths forge their items with forfeit souls. Shed your blood for me, and these artifacts will be yours. So, you come to the spirit forge for help, do you, vampire? Trade your secrets for the blood of the dead, I will.
flame sword. The poor wretch was warped beyond recognition. To think it was once human. Such strange creatures that had been spawned by this dark magic. Things half insect and half mammal. Human torsos grafted onto abominations of the flesh. Sick as it was, I couldn't help but admire its creator's ingenuity. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your magic energy recovers more quickly, for our blood enhances. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Flame Sword.
If it could be said that a land descended into madness, it would be an accurate account of Dark Eden, a garden of horrors seeded with sick perversion of nature's design. I knew that this Dark Eden I had trespassed upon would continue to grow until all of Nosgoth was consumed. Magic seethed and shifted. I watched the dome of energy as it expanded, absorbing and recreating, consuming life and leaving behind only a twisted parody. I passed through the wall unharmed. It seemed the magic only preyed on things that were alive and pure. Or perhaps it simply decided that I was twisted enough. A tower stood in the distance. From its apex spewed the vortex of energy that shaped the lands below.
The surface of the castle belied its interior, for it was far larger inside than out. With the powers the circle had at its disposal, it would have been simple to distort space to accommodate this strange structure. The sorcerer's sanctuary, his laboratory. Inside was all manner of items arcane. Pickled bodies, dissected corpses, both man and beast, and metal construct that heaved arcs of energy into the air. I sensed more than one force being manipulated in this place. Strange. Rarely did a sorcerer condescend to work with others.
This armor, wrought with the blood of noblemen, drains the blood from my enemies for me, leaving me to focus on the slaughter at hand. Help me, kind sir! Oh, please, help me, kind sir! Oh. of the necromancer himself. This allows me to dissect a creature's soul from its vessel of flesh. For these poor wretches, only oblivion awaits. Ah, not one, but three. Dejul the Energist, Bane the Druid, and Anacroth the Alchemist. How considerate of them to hasten my search. So the scourge of the circle has arrived. Fear him not, Bane. He is but a whelp. His soul is ours for the taking. Don't be ridiculous, Malik. To our aid. <laughs> Damn you, Alchemist! I had not come this far only to have my quarry escape! Vengeance! Vengeance for my eternity of suffering! Welp! As if you knew what eternity was! Grovel before your true master! Never! from crotch to gizzard and feed what's left to your brides.
As Vorador clashed against Malik, I gave pursuit to the fleeing wizards, the Jewel and Bane. I danced their dance. When the time came, they would dance upon my sword. His magic is weak! He is an affront to nature itself! It is our duty to purify him! Headdress had broken in the fight, but power still resided in its ivory form. The cloak was made from an alloy akin to lead, heavy and malleable, woven into fine links. The energy she controlled was stored in this garment. Malik's helmet amongst the scattered remnants of his armor, whole and intact. Vorador had finally laid his old adversary to rest. The helmet of Malak I placed before the Pillar of Conflict. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The act had taken on the feel of ritual. Isn't it strange how we must bribe our gods to stay? At the foot of the energy pillar, I set the cloak of Dejul. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The antler headdress of the Druid Bane I lay before the nature pillar. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. You must seek Azimuth the Planar at the heart of Avernus. Three instruments await you to aid you in your quest. But first, you must rise, and you must fall, and find your salvation in between.
Avernus consumed itself before my eyes. Flame Sword. The Gate of Avernus opened slowly before me, daring me to cross the threshold. 
Who was I to reject such an invitation? The city was paved in blood and flesh, yet what would have appalled me in life only tempted me in death. Once I would have felt horror, now only hunger remained. Avenus lay in ruins before me. Whatever hand slaughtered its people ravaged the city as well. <laughs> the
The beast paused for a moment, drooling in anticipation of the fine meal he saw before him. To his disappointment, he would not find me such easy prey. its eyes upon me, eager, hungry, as if it longed to rip my heart out and eat it before me as I died. I laughed as the onslaught began. Perhaps when it was over, it would be the other way around. <coughs> 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 Oh, 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 oh. 
Avernus was a religious autocracy, with the cathedral at its dais of power. Though the city lay in ruins, the cathedral remained untouched. The demons knew better than to bite the hand that feeds them.
and Hashak Gix spoke unto the world, and all who heard trembled. Bring me your firstborn, and shed their blood upon the altar of the world, so that I may take nourishment from them. Do this without question, or suffer my wrath for eternity. And its will was done.
gods, even legend, and the origin of Soul Reaver has been lost long ago. But its purpose remains, to feed on the souls of any creature it strikes. Kindred, this blade and I...
This armor was spawned in the most impure of spirit forges, tempered from the seething agony of tortured souls. The metal exists only partially in the human realm, causing it to fade between tangible and ethereal states. Above me stood a memory, etched in stained glass. Ah, what's this? I had not even realized the blade and the raiment were here. You wear those trinkets well, Cain. But I do believe that they would look better on me. The matriarch of Avernus, the Lady Azimuth. Her magical planing skills summon demons through runes inscribed in human blood. Come to me, my children. We shall ravage Nozgoth together. The Soul Reaver. So, little man, have they sent you to stop me? <laughs> my children shall rip you apart. Come, my demons, let us sup on vampire blood. was little trouble. Once her demonic thralls had been dispatched, she fell quickly to my blade. Azimuth, third eye, a gift from the Pillar of Dimensions, allowed the planar sight into other realms. The pillar reclaims its own. It will deliver you in time.